Well, hello, this is Kelly and I'm the Mathematic Plumber and I'd like to welcome you to the next video series where we talk about drainage, waste and venting. In this series, we're going to cover basic drainage design involving naming, sizing and other special code requirements. In today's video, we're just going to focus on naming the basic drainage pieces of a small drainage system. All code references will be made from the 2015 National Plumbing Code of Canada. The physics of fluid dynamics and drainage works the same across the entire planet. Please note, if you're viewing from another country, the drainage names, sizes, design practices, and general codes may be different. You need to follow your local codes. Let's start by looking at this picture. If you look on the far left, you're going to see the city sewer main, which is a large pipe that will head off to your city's sewage treatment plant. If this house would be on a private acreage, you may have a septic tank here instead. But we're going to focus on the city sewer main. Now we have a little pipe coming off of that, which is, generally speaking, 4 inches in size, that goes all the way to the house and everything that's in the house will drain through it. We call this the building sewer. The plumbing code has a number of definitions right near the beginning of the code in section 1412, defined terms. Let's look at building sewer. Building sewer means a pipe that is connected to a building drain, one meter outside a wall of a building, that leads to a public sewer or private sewage disposal system. So the building sewer begins here, one meter beside the building, and it travels all the way down until it meets up with either a septic tank or the city main like we showed you before. At the one meter mark, the building sewer ends and the building drain begins. This building drain will continue underneath the footing through these devices and end at this vertical pipe that we call the main stack. Now the code definition for the building drain is a little bit weird. Building drain means the lowest horizontal piping, including any vertical offset that conducts sewage, clear water waste, or stormwater by gravity to a building sewer. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, not a whole lot because it's way too vague, but it is industry standard to start at the building sewer and end at the main stack. That is all called the building drain. Now, before we get to that main stack, let's talk about these two devices in the building drain. The first one we come across is the main cleanout. A cleanout is a removable cap so you can get cleaning equipment down into the pipe to clear a blockage. The next device we come across is a normally open back water valve. Now this device only allows drainage to flow in the proper direction, so from the house out to the city main. But if the city main were to back up, this check valve will close, stopping that sewage from backing up into your house. The back water valve is only mandatory when there's a chance that city sewage can back up into your house and fill up your basement. The key here is in the building drain, you are only allowed to use the normally open design. There are a number of different designs. Feel free to look that up online to find out what the different ones are. Well, let's head back over to that main stack. Now, main stack is a trade name. That's not its official name. Its official name is a soil or waste stack. It's really hard to say, so I just call it a sow stack. Now, the code definition for a sow stack Soil waste stack means a vertical soil waste pipe that passes through one or more stories and includes any offset that is part of the stack. Little aside there, a soil waste pipe is a sewage pipe. So when we look at our main stack, we have a lab sink upstairs here. It drains into the stack and it goes all the way down through one story and eventually drains into the building drain. That makes this a soil waste stack. So the top of the solar waste stack is right here, and then we have this red pipe that extends up all the way through the roof. The top of every solar waste stack must have a stack vent. That is what the red pipe is. According to the code definition, stack vent means a vent pipe that connects the top of a solar waste stack to a vent header or to outside air. Now this is the first plumbing vent that we've come across today. The purpose of a vent in a plumbing system is to maintain atmospheric pressure throughout the entire drainage system and to remove sewer gases which can be poisonous or explosive. Now you might have noticed right at the top of that stack vent we increased the pipe size before passing through the roof. This is to prevent frost closure on cold winter days, but we're going to cover this in another video. Well let's point out something else here. We're going to notice a U-bend in the pipe below the lavatory sink, the bathtub, and that thing in the basement which is actually a floor drain. That is called a P-trap. That is an area where the water sits in the pipe and basically plugs the pipe off so sewer gas can't make it back into the house. That's its purpose. Now if we look at the lavatory sink and the bathtub, we're going to notice a horizontal pipe that's connecting the soil waste stack to the trap. That is called a trap arm. Now you'll also notice a pipe extending from the bottom of the water closet, which is a fancy name for a toilet 
and that heads over to the soil away stack. Now that is also a trap arm, but you don't see a P-trap there. That's because the water closet has its own built-in P-trap. That's why you can always see water inside the bowl of a water closet. The code defines it like this. Trap arm means that portion of a fixture drain between the trap weir and the vent pipe fitting. That particular definition uses a lot of different names that we're going to be learning in future videos. But the trap weir is this part of the trap right here. And the vent pipe connection is actually this TY right here that connects into the soil away stack. Now if you're looking at the toilet and the bathtub you'll say, hey that's joined into the drain though, that's not joined into the vent yet. Well that's because it's wet vented at that point. But wet venting will be its entirely own video series because it's very involved, so don't worry about that yet. The next name we're going to focus on happens right underneath the lav sink. There's a piece of pipe that goes down from the lav sink until it meets up with a trap. We call that the fixture outlet pipe. Now the bathtub also has one, but it's a, just a tiny little piece of pipe. But the floor drain has a fairly large one. That goes from the floor to the trap. So those are all fixture outlet pipes. And when we look in the code definition, fixture outlet pipe means a pipe that connects the waste opening of a fixture to the trap serving the fixture. Now the next piece does not come from the code definitions. We're going to look at that bathtub, we're going to see there's a very interesting drainage connection there. There's a pipe on the top side, and a pipe coming from the bottom. This is called a tub waste and overflow. The bottom connection is the waste, or the drain. The top connection is the overflow, just in case the tub gets accidentally overfilled, it can drain down from that point. If we look in the middle of the soil away stack, we're going to find a funky little device here. This is called an expansion joint. This is a telescopic joint that moves back and forth in there, makes a watertight seal, and it allows for the building to settle. What we don't want to have is rigid pipe there, the building settles down on that soil away stack and causes it to bow or fracture because of all the forces being put on it. So we put an expansion joint in. That is a code requirement. Now if we continue down our soil away stack, we come to another cleanout right near the base of it. Now this is a code requirement, but we will cover cleanouts in a totally different video. The last thing I want to look at here is the floor drain in the basement. According to the National Building Code, every building is required to have at least one floor drain. So there it is. Now the way it's piped into the building drain is not acceptable. That's for illustration purposes only. But we'll look at some other examples of that coming up because we're going to actually do a whole section on floor drains coming up in a future video. Now you may have noticed we only have one bathroom here. We don't have any kitchen. We don't have any laundry or clothes washer in here. We could do a lot more. Stay tuned for the next video where we get into that and discuss even more drain names because there's many of them. Until that point, you have yourself a great day.